The Rising Sun actually doesn't have much of an intro per se. Uh, it doesn't have a big protracted CG sequence that shows a lot of stuff. It just basically drops you right into the middle of the, the Pearl Harbor attack. Move it, you maggots, move it! You wake up in your bunk below the decks of your battleship uh, as the attack starts and you basically just have to roll out of bed and run up to the deck as fast as you can. Stuff's blowing up all around you. And there are a lot of uh, scripted sequences going on, a lot of, especially in Pearl Harbor, a lot of chaos. Stuff blowing up, guys getting electrocuted or yelling at you to do this or that. The Pearl Harbor sequence is really only a few minutes. It's just basically an intro that kind of introduces you to what's going on. The Pearl Harbor sequence after you get out of the ship is effectively just a rail shooter. Uh, you grab a gun emplacement on the side of your battleship and shoot down a bunch of zeros. And then you get blown off the deck and you get up into a PT boat and basically do the same thing. You just man a gun turret and shoot down fighters and bombers until the mission is over. Uh, after Pearl Harbor is over and the war has officially begun for America, you get into the actual first person shooter meat of the gameplay. All the missions after the, the Pearl Harbor sequence are the, the same Medal of Honor first person shooter gameplay that you're used to. You just go from point A to point B trying to accomplish your mission objectives. You're always behind enemy lines, you're always part of a really small force, sometimes it's just you. Uh, you're usually trying to accomplish some kind of covert objective. Some of the objectives in the game include taking out artillery emplacements that are up on a hill. Uh, you have to infiltrate uh, an Axis meeting at one point. Um, at the end of the game you actually have to sink a carrier. So the actual run and gun gameplay in Rising Sun is, is really similar to what you've seen in the uh, previous console iterations of the series. You've got the standard array of World War II era weapons, like you've got a Thompson submachine gun, M1 rifle, uh, 1911 pistol, you know, that kind of thing. Obviously one of the big differences this time is that you're fighting Japanese soldiers rather than Nazis. Unfortunately a lot of the, the basic mechanical aspects of Rising Sun's gameplay don't stack up to what you saw in the previous games. The biggest offender is probably the game's artificial intelligence that governs the behavior of your teammates and the enemy soldiers. When you're playing through the missions, you'll see the enemies doing a lot of really stupid things. Sometimes the soldiers will get caught on walls, uh, sometimes they'll fail to react to what you're doing around them, um, sometimes they'll just stand there and let you shoot them. There's some collision detection problems where the, the soldiers will clip through walls or floors occasionally. There are a lot of problems with the hit detection when you're fighting enemies too. There is a location-based damage system, you know, you can shoot people in the head or the chest or one leg or the other, but it just doesn't work very well. The production values in Rising Sun are actually pretty much on par with the previous game, so you've got a really big, kind of larger-than-life film score soundtrack. You've got a lot of voice acting in the missions, you'll actually hear the, the Japanese soldiers speaking in Japanese if you sneak up on them. It's worth mentioning that Rising Sun is one of the first THX certified games for, for anybody that's into the home theater aspect of gaming. The graphics in the game are actually pretty bland. There's not a whole lot of detail going on in the backgrounds in a lot of the missions. Um, since you're on kind of a, a South Pacific island hop, you're going to be going through a lot of jungle environments. The, the trees and the plants actually are pretty basic looking in the ground. You'll just see a lot of flat plains. The textures are kind of muddy. The, the jungle environments just aren't all that great looking. You won't be stuck in jungles the whole time, though. There's a, a mission that takes place in Singapore at night, actually, that's pretty visually appealing. The character models are pretty good looking. Uh, they're kind of a contrast to the backgrounds. If you zoom in on somebody, you can see a lot of detail in their face. Uh, they animate pretty well. Uh, they're, they're pretty nicely done all around. There really aren't any differences between the three versions on the three consoles. Um, the only thing that stands out is the PlayStation 2 version has online multiplayer. It's the problems with the enemies and the AI just kind of undermine the whole experience. It's worth taking a look at for fans of the previous games, for, for people that are interested in World War II. If you're new to the series, you'll probably want to look elsewhere for some first-person shooter action.